We are dreaming of seeing real meaningful games happening and that's got us thinking about some teams to watch some teams that kind of have us wondering what they're going to produce on the ice. So let's start with uh, the Buffalo Sabres because this is a team that missed the playoffs by one point. Why is this a team that you're going to be watching? Well, I'm going to be watching because of what they showed us last year. I mean, they could put the puck in the net with that with anybody, right? Like they've got a boatload of talent. They've got young defensemen that are kind of taking that next step. I, I don't mind their goaltending as far as what they have as committee uh, in that regard. But I want to focus on the ads they had in this offseason mm -hmm. on defense because they didn't do a great job keeping the puck out of their net as a team defense right. last year. So Connor Clifton, I'm a huge Connor Clifton fan. I think he brings some uh, sandpaper to a back end. I, I don't think we've He's pleased played on a really deep and good Boston Bruins team where I don't know if we've seen the, the ceiling on this on this kid yet. So uh, I'm excited to see the opportunity he gets there and Eric Johnson. We know what a leader he was in, in Colorado and what he meant for the, the youth movement there and mm -hmm. Kale McCarr and, and Devon Taves is still a younger play, uh, defenseman. And so these two guys coming in here, A, defending, B, leading from their experience in those teams that they've played on, I think will serve this team well. And this Buffalo Sabres team and even just get a little bit better. I yeah. don't expect them to be a shut it down 95 New Jersey Devils. Like I'm just expecting them to get better yeah. and, and play better team defense. When you look at that uh, overall uh, uh, unit right there. And they've got the pieces. Like It'll Owen Power is going to be a stud. Rasmus Dahlin already is. It's about complimenting them. Yeah. So you know we know what Labushkin can bring. Yeah, Eric Johnson, Clifton. So Power Samuelson and, and Darlene, like that that's your that's your future and that's your skill. And yeah. It's, it's really good. Yeah. Now it's about getting the right leaders in there. Guys who maybe can take some of the they could teach by and lead by example, but also maybe take some of the pressures off of those guys' plate. Yeah. So they can ease into it at a, at a better pace. So uh, I'm excited to see them. If they can defend this year, Buffalo's gonna make the playoffs. I mean, they led the league in goals. Uh, for most of the season. So the, you're right. Scoring was not a problem. They've got superstars like Tage Thompson, Alex Tuck, etc. Jeff Skinner had a great year. So you're right. They got to find a way to keep it out of the back of their net. I, I'm wondering if they might be in conversation with Connor Hellebuck down the line. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. There's still time, but that would certainly make things look a lot better for them and possibly put them into the playoff picture. Again, they missed by just one point this past season. How about the Rangers? Do you think they improved? I, I was left wondering what they had after that first round exit against the Devils. They, they had they were disappointed mm -hmm. clearly. I mean the fan base was disappointed the the ownership management uh, players everybody was disappointed because this is a team that's right there and what I think and what I'm watching for in this upcoming season what is it going to get what is it going to take for this team to get to take that next step. Mm -hmm. I, I do love the signing of Blake Blake Wheeler. I think that was gigantic because that's a little bit of an insurance policy but at 800 grand or whatever they're yeah. using on him take it. that's going to help them in a big way, Nick Bonino uh, gives them some depth there, uh, and uh, I just I just find that this team, this team needs to have players in certain roles, and Bonino will bring that uh, just kind of specialty players, right? Yeah. They've got that. But the key to this team that I'm watching for is the Lafreniere and Kako. Yes. And it's no news. Everybody's been talking <laughs> about it, right? Lafreniere is about to get signed here. Hopefully get it done here real quick. But I think Kako is going to get an opportunity to play on that top line or wow. top six. And Lafreniere might find himself up in that position as well. It's a little different for him because he's on the left side with Kreider and Panarin, so there might be some juggling to, to take place. But I think Peter Laviolette's going to put these two players in a position to succeed because they've got to figure out, are they ready to take that next step? They've done things that I've seen away from the puck, on the defensive side of the puck. For me, if I'm coaching them, I'm like, all right, they've put, they're putting the work in, they're learning, they're protecting pucks, they're holding on to pucks. The, the, the puck security has gotten really good, I believe, with these two. So let's see if they could dance a little bit, put them in these mm -hmm. situations, because if those two players take the next step, it could put this team over the top. And uh, last year, um, they had some veteran players playing in front of them. I think they're going to get good long looks in the top six. Yeah, so you said the Rangers are one team that's right there and could contend not just for a playoff spot, certainly, but to win the Stanley Cup. Another team I think is right there, too, Carolina Hurricanes, right? I mean, they were so close. I still go back to Rod Brendamore saying this wasn't a sweep. It wasn't. And... It, it was, but it didn't feel like no. a sweep because every game was so close and this team was so good. What do you make of their offseason moves? I, when, when usually coaches, players, people, I mean, I, you hear youth parents say that. Yeah. Talk a lot of times, well, we should have won the game. Usually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But you didn't. But, yeah. but you didn't. But, but in this regard, when, when 
Rod Brindamore was saying, and, and we watched those games. I know. They were the better team in, yeah. in pretty much every game. It was every, a four overtime game. In every <laughs> facet of every game. But those additions that they added this year. So this has been a team that's been knocking, and they've been on the doorstep, knocking on that door and ready to kick it down and win a Stanley Cup. And they've had bad luck. They've run into hot teams. They just found a way. It's, it just hasn't worked in their favor. So the one area that they could get better in, I think, is a little more grit. Mm. And they made some additions, and they've gotten grittier. I mean, you're going to get Svechnikov back. He's your big power forward. Yeah. I think he provides that. Michael Bunting's got a little bit of an edge to him. And I think that that's really valuable. He could bounce around your lineup anywhere you want to put him. But he, he, he gets in your face. You know when you're playing against him. This is already a Carolina team. I'm not trying to insinuate they were a soft team. They're not a soft team. They were a team that plays the game the right way. They forecheck hard, and, and they get flying all over the ice and, and create some chaos. But then you're on the back end. Orlov's one of the best open ice hitters, I think, in the National Hockey League. So as opposing teams forward, if you're coming down, you think twice about going to the middle of the ice, right? Uh, they go and reacquire Tony D'Angelo. He's got some attitude in his game, right? And he can provide it uh, just, that, just that edge. And I think that that's the only area that this team could have gotten better, and they did get better. So Carolina, for me, coming out of the gates, they might be my favorite in the East to win the Stanley Cup. And for a long time this offseason, we were talking about the Hurricanes having rumblings around Eric Carlson. We thought maybe he would end up in Carolina. Not so fast. The Pittsburgh Penguins enter the mix. Are you going to be, uh, well, I guess, what do you think about the Pittsburgh Penguins and Eric Carlson joining the mix? I mean, it's an incredible ad. It's an incredible ad by Kyle Dubas, and he didn't have to give up a ton to get him. All right? And uh, with that being said, I mean, you're talking about a ton of talent. This has been a team that has a ton of talent. They can put the puck in the net. Uh, I, I'm very curious what this is going to look like on the power play. Yeah. Uh, me personally, I, I think you have Latang and Carlson on that power play. Ooh. I think and then you go Malkin, Crosby, Gensel up front. So, I mean, absolutely loaded. But, I mean, they've got options. But and Gensel's hurt, right, to start the season yeah, for a Gensel, little bit? Yeah, Gensel, just for the short, short part of the f first start of the season, he'll be out, okay. uh, what it looks like. But then they've added Riley Smith, Noel Achari, uh, you know. They, they've got some they've got some role players. Yeah. And that was an area that I really thought this team. So when they went out and got Carlson, it's great. Was that the main need they needed? Probably not, but you got significantly better getting him. When I look here, this is pay attention to the bottom six. Mm. Uh, th that is going to be something to figure out. I mean, obviously Gensel would probably would bump Nieto on that second line, but just for beginning of the season is how it looks like it, it could start potentially. Mm -hmm. But you, you have players now that understand their roles. I, I'm interested to see how Jeff Carter plays. Yeah. Is Jeff Carter going to be able to transform his game and adapt a little bit at this stage of his career? Um, because he's not quite the Jeff Carter that he was when he won his two Stanley Cups. Right. A lot of what ifs. Yeah. For this team, they got better this offseason. Yeah. So Riley interested. Smith just yes. won the Cup. He's going there. And he's going to go there, and, and he's going to provide something that this team needs, too. Mm -hmm. They need some more forwards, and they got them there how they fit together is the next question that falls on Mike Sullivan finding the the right buttons to push but they need some specialty guys to go out there and take some of it off of Sid's plate mm -hmm. take some of it off of uh, Evgeny Malkin's plate if they can do that with the Eric Carlson ad on the back end this team could be very difficult to beat. Well, this was a team that for the first time in, what, 16 years, those star players had to sit and watch the entirety of the Stanley Cup playoffs because they missed ending a 16-year playoff run. So you know that they're going to be hungry to get back in the mix and be seen as a contender. I'm certainly going to be watching them as well. And then you have the Winnipeg Jets, which is kind of a, a different story, yep. right? There's a lot of chaos happening there right now. So what will you be watching for most in that situation? Well, Winnipeg is, it's a little bit of a different feel to yeah. it, but they have a lot of assets. And uh, you mentioned Connor Hellbuck's name before. He'll get moved at some point. I don't know when that is. I don't know. Maybe they'll have to start the season with Connor Hellbuck. you got to get a return for him. So uh, Blake Wheeler's already out, mm -hmm. right? Mark Shifley's that other big ticket there that I, or big, player, I should say, that's on a reasonable ticket yeah. that, that would make him very movable, Movable, I think. And, and the Boston Bruins are a team that come to mind for me mm. for that. So I think Connor Hellebuck, you've got, um, you know, Mark Shifley. You start looking at this roster and some of the pieces they have to move that will get a significant return. And then it's how they fit in with Kyle Connor. Mm -hmm. Kyle Connor's a piece that he's still young, even though he's been around for a while and he's been scoring a ton of goals. And I'm watching how this team transitions right now, what they kind of return they get and what first step they take to kind of reinventing themselves as a team. It's going to be very intriguing for me to watch this Jets team and because uh, they've got some they got assets. They've got some pieces to mm -hmm. move out in in turn, get some in return, get some 
on the backside and see what they turn into.